Our next presenter is Pastor Leroy Ferry Dizon Paluhutan. He is from Indonesia. He is going to present uh, a title, Ellen G. White Statement on Christmas. Uh, Pastor Leroy is a very friendly and helpful man. I still remember one time uh, when I saw a big dead mouse beside the apartment J. So I called housing department. Instead of his wife to pick up the phone, then he picked up the phone and I asked him to get someone to, to clean it. Then he came personally and cleaned. So I'm so touched. I was there and I saw the big dead mouse there. It's under the pipe, water pipe there. Thank you so much. He is a very happy man. You can see him every time with smiling face. Now I would like to pass the time to Pastor Leroy. Let's welcome him. Good morning, everybody. What that I would like to present to you, actually, it was not presenting my own beliefs or practice, but this is uh, just like an honest uh, study upon the LNG Watch statements on Christmas. So therefore, let's bear with me on this discussion. And also, while I'm reading this uh, paper, you will get some points and we will discuss later. LNG White Statements on Christmas. Background of the study. The short study of LNG White Statements on Christmas was motivated by existing pros and cons about its observance among SDA churches in Asia since the Bible explicitly does not give any account about Christmas observation, therefore, one of the several options or approaches acceptable to the SDA church taken by this study was to deal with Ellen G. White's writings. It is a fact that she talks considerably on this topic. It is hoped that this study will benefit the reader either for the best practices of Christmas for those who have been observing it of a further study and reflection. Methodology, procedure, and classifying Ellen G. White's statements. <coughs> Utilizing Ellen G. White's statement, Ellen G. White's writing in CD room format published in 1998, the study began with searching the words Christmas, which retrieved a sum total of 127 occurrences within 107 paragraphs. Later in this paper, they will be called Christmas paragraphs. This result was taken after excluding subtitles and editorial comments in which the word Christmas appears. In the second attempt, an identifying process was taken to eliminate 19 repeated paragraphs due to the later date of publications. As a result, the number is reduced down to 106 occurrences within 88 paragraphs. Pertaining to these 88 Christmas paragraphs, they are originated from only 14 different sources, where there are three significant sources based on the percentage of Christmas paragraphs from which they come from. After carefully reading on these six paragraphs, which have no comments about Christmas, 
were eliminated from the list because the mentioning of the word is only a matter of occurrences, occurrence and can be classified in two categories. The first one is five autobiographical, uh, autobiographical paragraphs written concerning events occurred on Christmas and a record about her sickness, malaria on Christmas. And then the second one is a knowledge about some seasonal fruit at the end of the year or Christmas. Finally, there are only 88, 82 remaining Christmas paragraphs which fall into eight, uh, six categories as follow. Number one is, uh, the first category is offerings, gifts, donations, and even tithes yeah, related to Christmas paragraph. Uh, I put in the footnote number six, this by the number of paragraphs included to its category stands as the majority though it relation to Christmas observations, which embraces 56, uh, series, 56 paragraphs. So then we come to the next categories, the second, admonitions to avoid inappropriate Christmas celebrations. That is the reality how Christmas has been celebrated in contrast with how it should be celebrated, according to Ellen White. And then the third category is Christmas is suggested as a time to, we have four there, and then the, uh, the fourth uh, category, Christmas itself, is discussed on the matter of the quality of its substance. Let me, yeah, let me to point this out. There is no divine sanctity upon Christmas, and then number B and C. And then uh, the second to the last category, Christmas program activity, and then the last one is only two categories in the subtitle, it, that is uh, miscellaneous thoughts. Based on these uh, uh, above categories, the study proceeds to examine these Christmas paragraphs on the following sections. Definition. Christmas, as understood by Ellen G. White, is the commemoration of Jesus' birth observed on the 25th December, although she was also aware of the uncertainty of the date as far as the Bible and history are concerned. She admits that Christmas is one of the few holidays in America during that time, and it is observed following the church tradition without a claim, divine sanctity resting upon the very date. In addition, she also looks Christmas as a season, as a season extended for a period of time before and after the date when it comes as an activity on one point, and because of it, it is adjacent to the New Year's on another point. Nevertheless, it could be equitable as well as to say that she recommends in her solo statements the greeting of the New Year Happy New Year instead of Christmas greeting, Merry Christmas, in respect to the situation of the greeted family. I put also in the footnote, it is admitted by Ellen G. White that sometimes New Year greetings seems far more appropriate to say in the conditions of despondency. Yeah, this is the solo uh, paragraph about this. And in this statement, it seems that a postponement is preferable, hoping that for the short days after another holiday, greetings could be appropriate to say. Furthermore, Christmas as a season could be accepted as her understanding based on her diary entries in mentioning Christmas Eve, which is on the date right before 25th December. The significance in observing Christmas yeah, of course, according to Ellen G. White. The faith of SDA Church as a Christian church oftentimes is questionable in the eyes of her fellow Christians when it comes to the observance of Christmas. While, on, while in all honesty, it is admitted that Christmas is the most celebrated in the whole Christian's calendar, 
in which faith can be expressed in accepting the historical birth of the Savior into a human family on this planet Earth. Regarding its observance, Ellen G. White looks its significance lays on the remembrance and honoring Jesus as the supreme object as it should be upon the holiday celebrated, upon whom introspecting self is made to reflect on his humbleness instead of devoting all means and labors to fasting self. It is the reason why she encourages that on that day, the old story of Jesus' birth should be recounted in accordance to remembrance goals aspects. And that moment every believer should testify to men, angels, and to God that they remember the Redeemer. Even further, she calls those who overlook Christmas because the uncertainty of the dating as narrow-minded. Uh, pertaining to this very phrase, narrow-minded, I put also in footnote, yeah, using the same phrase, narrow-minded, she recalls one biblical woman, you know, Penina, and some respective held by even ministers of the church. So she called them badly narrow-minded. Wow. Now let us proceed to Christmas tree. Christmas tree is mentioned always in connection with giving offerings, which hung on it in the church, symbolizing a rich harvest from members of the church to the treasury of God and for the needy. Yeah, let's see the footnote there. As mentioned earlier, this topic is the major category by percentage of Christmas paragraphs. The offerings, gifts, donations, and even tithes are promoted for several projects and ministries, such as current building projects. I have no time to find out what is this current building project, and also for the needy, for God's work, and then we have another building project here, such as sanitarium building project, and then also for mission or foreign missions and for reminding unpaid tithes. By the way, I discussed this also with my wife, yeah, about the unpaid tithes, and then you know, we make a reformation on this. So we counted our unpaid tithes because of our badly situation for some times. Ellen G. White takes this Christmas tree as a device in kindling the spirit of giving among the church members. While in using another term that is evergreen tree, she also uses, uses it in a parallel with the tree of love upon which all the fruit of the spirit are growing upon and as a metaphor of the man who loves God and meditates on the law of God day and night, bringing blessings for others. This stands in conjunction with her encouraging statements on giving offerings to the church and for the needy. In one of the, her empirical journey, impressed with the visual skin of evergreen trees, with their branches loaded with snow, she then comments, it is a picture of added loveliness. She also considers this kind of tree has medical properties for health promoting. Therefore, in relation to the constructions of sanitarium, she advocates the removal of the building site rather than having to them down. And she claims that this statement was received as a light vision given to her. How to observe, this is the main point I think, how to observe and reach the true object of Christmas. Ellen G. White shows plainly her disappointment toward the disgration of Christmas observance, including gluttonous fasting, wasting large sums of money, sensual appetite that affects physical, mental, moral power, showing pride and fashion, and sacrificing health. Realizing these centuries planted mentalities toward Christmas, she further warns that even Christmas has been the most effective means of turning the mind away from Christ because Christmas has been celebrated for self-pleasing. In contrast to the way how the world celebrates Christmas, she urges 
that in Christmas observance, Christ should be the supreme object or glorified. Our minds should be directed to the mercy and loving kindness of God and suggesting not to buy costly presents. I put also in the footnote there, an example of gifts or presents she mentions clearly, yeah, just to make an example, is to buy, or, uh, to buy and give a book entitled, you know this book, The Ojibin History and Reformation, on which the goal of giving presents can be fulfilled. That is, to be a real benefit to the receivers. I continue. Or spending much time in thinking and preparing the presents instead of using them for meditating on Christ. Through the true service members, sorry, through the true service, members of the church will come to self-denying and self-sacrificing. In the context of Christmas program or worship service, the impact of that program will make the spirit of self-denying self and self-sacrificing appear in the hearts of worshippers. She also incites and reminds the parents concerning their children that if the parents' goal is only to give pleasure to their children or to another by giving presents to them, then our offerings are diverted from the true objects. In simple words, it might be correct to understand her emphasis on Christmas is to take this as an opportunity to meditate on Jesus and to be a blessing for others. I also uh, observe Babel first use in her statement on Christmas, but very sorry begging your pardon, because I put really short there. Based on the biblical passages used or referenced, it is clear that Ellen G. White is not building a new doctrine about Christmas. From the observation about Christmas paragraphs, the study found that what is being recommended is to take Christmas holiday as an opportunity to glorify God, commemorate Jesus, and as one of the results to be a generous people. In footnote number 32, I put some uh, significant biblical passage there or text. Yeah. And the first one is First Corinthians, it's about giving, as well as to Corinthians and John. We know this famous text, and then Matthew, the, uh, the story about the birth of Jesus, and also the last part, that is Acts 16, about the Macedonian mission. That is in, uh, release, uh, in, in, in harmony with what he, he also emphasized about foreign mission offerings. In conclusion, Christmas cannot be equated with the Sabbath observance, on which the Bible clearly states that God sanctifies and rests upon it. Christmas is a moment in general that has been accepted as a Christian holiday that should be used as an opportunity to receive the blessings of the spiritual and religious activities on the day as well as an opportunity to channel our thanksgiving offerings and donations to those in need in order to minimize if it is not impossible or if it is not possible to seize another statistic Christmas of homeless children at the street and to the expansion of his kingdom. It is suggested from the study since Christmas has been accepted as a holiday also in Asia context, then instead of doing nothing on that very day or being worried about inappropriate activities that the youth or children in particular and the church members in general might go in, its observance, I don't know how to make this uh, express my understanding, should be considered 
seriously within the SDA church. Moreover, by performing this in our own church, it is potential channel to have others who have no our faith yet to be touched and led to the Savior. This is the rule for those who accept Christmas as the celebrations of Christ's birth make him to be the most and prominent figure in your celebration, even in other activities. In something, if something prevents your thought to him, your thought to him, your worship and your celebration will be in vain. As a friendly appeal, I personally would like just to quote one of her statements that could be the best in concluding of Christmas observance, take advantage of the occasion to turn the customary gifts of the seasons into the right channel. For the last one, I would like to make my personal statements. It is uh, like a uh, reflection. It was a story about a professor of psychology who asked his 40 students to write on their papers the word Christmas. After all students did so, he asked them to write the first thought coming to their mind immediately when they thought about Christmas. And then this is the fact. Three, they wrote also holy, missile two, presents, turkeys, holiday, carols, and even Santa Claus, the fat old man. Their words were based on the factual actuality, but none of them wrote the birthday of Jesus. The reflection at the end of the story is as there was no room for the baby Jesus in the inn. There is no room for him today in the celebration of Christmas. In addition, a factual expression says, someone has written that people use Xmas and it means exhaustion, excuses, exchanges, excesses, extravagances, exasperation, eh, oh, sorry, exasperations, exhibitions, and worldly excitement. How much better to make the Lord the very center of our Christmas observance. Keep Christ in Christmas. In spite of these condemned practices, to the world has been involved in. However, in a sense, I might say that Christmas is the way I personally, so this is my new understanding. I expre uh, personally express my faith toward the incarnation of Jesus. Celebrating Christmas and being involved in its worship, not as a kind of earthly pleasuring party, might be understood to express my belief on historical Jesus coming down to the earth as a baby human like us. Besides, I might not be wrong to say that Christmas is a way of paying my sorry as a community of believers because it was so few, in fact, the number of people, even the informed prophecy people of Israel missed that birthday of Jesus in Bethlehem, were joining to welcome baby Jesus at his birthday. Finally, I came up with two things for further consideration. First, could it be that it is because Christmas has been standing so contrast to the poor and humble birthday of Jesus? Besides, the date also was not the actual date of his birthday. On these matters, people would easily forget and even discard Jesus from the celebration of his own birthday. Second, the Bible teaches differently that it is because of Jesus was dead, but he then is alive. Then his former birth is not so important than his later birth from the death. Let me give you a final uh, point that I would like to make based on my own experience when I came here the first time. So after four years living in Ayas, sorry to say, and then one time at the Christmas Eve, oh no, no, I, I don't think so, it's Christmas Eve, but in Christmas season, 
and then my daughter, my two daughters, asked me to join with a Christmas party here at Ayas. And then you know, <laughs> as a maybe as a narrow-minded, let's say like that, I say, no, no, we we cannot go there. And then what happened next? My daughters claim me that I'm not accepting Jesus incarnation. So this is one of the reasons why I uh, chose this uh, topic to be presented upon you, my friends. So this is my presentations. Thank you so much. Now is the time for question. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for your presentation. Um, my question is this. Uh, what has been and should be for a Seventh-day Adventist is uh, Christmas uh, a holy day or a holiday? Yeah, holiday or holiday. Holy day. Uh, according to my study, the source study, I believe, not I believe, it is also based on the Bible that uh, Christmas celebrations or observance has no uh, divine sanctity. So on this stand, I can say it is better to say holiday rather than holiday. Even though maybe some of us may be still uh, struggling with this kind of uh, term, terminology I mean, because we can also uh, make these two words parallel. See, but yeah, in general we can say holiday is a, is a day when everybody free from their job. And then holiday is the day when the sanctity or divine sanctity rests upon it. Here and then at the back. Again, my question would be my answer as well. <laughs> okay. I'm from Pakistan, from devoted Catholic family. Okay. And there is not much difference between Catholics and Protestants in our country. We all are liberal. We all observe Christmas Day. We have masses in Adventist churches. Okay. New Year. Even Resurrection Day, so-called Easter, but we call it Resurrection Day. Why didn't nobody choose Easter? It should be more hot topic. Okay, <clears throat> I knew it, we knew that the date for Christmas is not the right date. And uh, we knew where did that Christmas feast or the festival uh, come from. We knew that it came from pagan Rome, right? Those uh, days, and even many of the practices. We can give many excuses, like the gifts and all, but with the current, the present, Christmas celebration and the symbols and events and the practices, not at all. I don't agree with that. Just like Pastor Frederick Paul said, three notes, we have many ex you know, excuses. Like Hindus have three notes with that Mangal Sutra wedding, that uh, amulet. And in the Christian, some tie three times that necklace. If I were at Shadrach Meshach and Abednego's time, I could say, oh, I let me tie my shoelace. And that is, king is also happy and my life is also safe. We can find many excuses when it comes to faith. Okay? But the thing is, until I did not know the right dates or the days of Jesus' birth, we observed. But when I learned 
from the Bible that what was the Jesus uh, birth s uh, season or the month or the weeks I could observe uh, I could celebrate Christmas but not anymore and Bible has I know many of the professors must have studied or have learned from those uh, uh, research from the Bible that what is the uh, you know uh, the, the actual season of Jesus birth so why those other <clears throat> we should know and Bible is very much clear when was Jesus born so nobody has any excuse, any Adventist, non-Adventist professor or ordinary person like me, that Bible doesn't tell about Jesus' birth. Bible does tell. We need to search it. And it is there. I know it. Okay. And uh, the other thing, why I would relate it with the Sabbath keeping. Why other churches don't observe Sabbath in a right way? Why they don't observe? All the Protestant and other uh, Catholic churches why they don't know the right day. If they observe it on the right day, they will know and they will have to follow the right ways as well for Sabbath. In the same way, if we know the right time of Jesus' birth, we will not go for the wrong practices as well. Now we have borrowed, we all many times everywhere, again I'm saying I have observed here, my country, even division of us everywhere. We all do you know as the Romans do when you are in Rome do as the Romans do and this is our practice we need to be frank with our faith not with our fellow people or our positions we are doing like the Romans do okay uh, my concern is the the message of Ellen White, I think we, we are in no as Seventh-day Adventists. I think she was more in favor of mission than celebration. Because when you read, you think about gifts, go to the community, help the poor people so that they can know Jesus. But we have changed that. We have parties. We take our children out. We forget the mission. I'm concerned because in my country, on Christmas Day, or whether we like it or not, our children even run away from home and go to beaches and other places. And there they get corrupt. So what should we do to keep our kids from the hands, away from the hands of the devil? rather than just maybe have one evening Christmas Eve gifts exchange on Christmas Day, we leave them in the hands of the devil. I think it should be more of a mission than celebration. It is not about celebration. It is about mission. There is no way we can celebrate Christmas. We can do mission so that we can save our young people. If that is the focus of the paper, I think it will be a good paper. But if it is to enhance celebration, I think it is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Let me uh, say a few words on this. Yeah, based on my study as well, that my, uh, the majority of Christmas paragraphs emphasize about offerings. Yeah? So I do agree with what you said, that this must be in relation not to the observance itself, but to the mission, yeah? to the mission. So thank you for correcting me. Pastor Pakpahan, thank you so much for the presentation. In your uh, study on the statements of uh, um, Mrs. Ellen White, um, did she make those statements in the context of regulating uh, what Christians or Adventists should do in the midst of community who had been practicing celebrating 
Christmas or she made that those statements to encourage even community Christian community who have not yet celebrated Christmas they can start one but with that uh, 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 context so is this like uh, a Moses allowing the the Israelites to to divorce because they keep on doing it or is this an encouragement to start one in your study thank you yeah uh, uh, one condition that I have learned from this study is it was a difficult time at the time they ran off for money to support especially foreign mission to Europe. This is one uh, condition. So then, uh, Ellen G. White is promoting this, uh, how can I say, this holiday as a channel to receive blessings. No, 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 to receive uh, offerings or donations from the, from the church members. So they have a, a meeting, yeah? In many days, I, I count for five days. In at yeah, five days, yeah, from Monday up to uh, Saturday. Even Saturday, they have also uh, Christmas uh, service. And then the second one is, I in my understanding, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. When he speaks strongly to to call those who oppose this celebration based on the uncertainty of the date he called them narrow-minded so in my understanding she's proposing this yeah to those uh, even to those who have not been involved in the celebration like that thank you so I, I have two, two, what's that? Two, two situations in which we can find uh, the, the, what's that? The, the statements, uh, the historical background of these statements yeah, of LNG White's paragraphs, Christmas paragraphs. So the first one is about the bad situation, especially in financial, and then the second one, it is also making suggestion to those who oppose the celebration. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for your questions and opinions. Now is the time to present a certificate of appreciation. IAS Asian Theological Society Certificate of Appreciation gratefully presented to Leroy Ferry Dizon Paluhutan. In sincere appreciation for your valuable presentation on Ellen G. White's statement on Christmas during the second IAS Asian Theological Society Forum with the team issues in beliefs and practices, understanding biblical theological principles for controversial practices of Seventh-day Adventists in Asia. Given this 15th uh, day of June 2014 at Adventist International Institute, uh, Institute of Advanced Studies, Larang 1, Silang Kawiti, Philippines. <laughs>